Hello everyone, welcome to the NFE Classic Finals. I'm here today joined by Frosty. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, hi, me, SBPC or Frosty, whichever one's more comfortable for you to say. Yeah, Frosty is uh, the old gens director for NFE. Uh, they are the tournament leader for this NFE Classic tournament. And today we're facing, uh, we're watching the fight Quags versus Arctic for the uh, championship or what have you. Someone who, uh, I made it to the uh, semifinals and lost to Arctic, so uh, while I don't have a bias in this, uh, it'll be interesting to see it play out. Um, you have any comments about this matchup? Um, it's actually particularly interesting because Quags is known for his well-roundedness around the metas, but Arctic has um, kind of a lenience advantage in the builder since he has worked with me personally. I know how he builds. He likes to build these bulkier offensive teams that just kind of have a nice matchup all around especially in the black-white meta where he uses a lot of Duosian, Oros, he likes to use a lot of Monferno setup stuff. Yeah. Uh, but Quags, Quags plays these really strong offenses, and I feel like he has the lean in DPP and SM. But other than that, I feel like it's going to be pretty even to see. Yeah. I see a game five. Yeah, I, I would be very surprised if this didn't go at least past uh, three. Uh, I know for a fact that Quags has always been one of those people to pull random crap out of his ass, so... Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they bring, and I, from what I understand, we're starting off with uh, Oras Gen 6 to start the finals, and I know that Arctic's probably one tier that they play probably best is Oras, from what I understand, given uh, my matchup with them previously, so I think it'll be uh, a really good fight to uh, start things off as they as they go into it. Alright, I am... Screaming at them on Discord to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, Arctic is considering going black white round one, which is perfectly fine since he has the top seed, so he does get to pick what meta is played first. Yeah. So, for those who don't know, by the way, Arctic was uh, second seed going into playoffs, and Quags was uh, fourth, I believe. And so. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, the first round of the playoffs, all the top seeds uh, won their matchups. So, it was a very interesting sort of semifinals where. Uh, one seed played four seed and two seed played three seed. So I lost to Arctic because I was three seed and uh, Tack lost to Quags as the fourth seed. So now we have the uh, second and fourth seeds in the finals. And, uh, you know, I think that's the other thing about this tour as well is that the old gens of NFE are very distinct from each other. So just because someone might be really strong at one, uh, you know, uh, it's good. All right, cool. And I can, just a heads up, by the way, when you message me on Showdown, it's showing up on the thing. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I had that there, so that way I could quickly invite you whenever Sweet. they had it up. Showdown froze for Arctic because he has over a thousand teams in his builder. What a dumbass. Like, <laughs> see, what I do with that is when I have that many teams, I, I know that lag from the team builder. About uh, once a month, I will basically just... Uh, copy all of them to the desktop version of Showdown, and then save all the text files onto my external hard drive. So I have probably about seven megabytes of text files that are Teams. And I wonder, uh, I wonder how many I have because I know I I document all my Teams. Like every time yeah. I clean my builder out, I clean it out by meta, and then put all my Teams in random places where I know I can. And so I wonder how many Teams I have. Yeah. Just I think I have aside. a couple thousand teams on uh, this hard drive at this point, so that's pretty pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, it's weird, especially with these NFE teams that are just sort of like, Gen 7 has that NFE thing, but there's no, like, Gen 6 NFE tag on Showdown anymore. <laughs> Which makes it kind of, like, tedious to sort of th sort through them. Yeah. I figure we can probably... Well, I'll probably just cut to the first match as it comes along, given that we're gonna post-process this nah leaving the uh leaving the random talking yeah just let him have it you know yeah the small talk I it's guess, all good yeah it's all small talk we could probably just have like a quick link to when the battle starts yeah i'll i'll work on uh editing in things accordingly yeah one of the things that i i have to say these old gens too uh when i'm when i'm building i've found that <laughs> Some of these, it's very easy to fall back on certain things. Oh, look, so we have the uh, first thing going up, and it looks like it's black-white, actually. So let's dive right into this. Yes, sir. All right, so we have Arctic bringing Hippo, Patas, Duosian, Mistrevis, Roselia, Clef, and Monferno, where 
Uh, Quags has Electabuzz, Monferno, Sneasel, uh, Marshtomp, Natu, and Vullaby. Uh, did I just turn off the animations? Weird. Uh, so we won't have animations for this, I guess. I don't know if that matters that much. Might just be because uh, to save. Anyway, so basically, looking at this right away, uh, you are definitely right with your assessment of Arctic Frost. Um, because he's got his Hippo, Duosian Core, Missy, and Clefairy. And he also has the spikes coming from Rose, which will be definitely interesting, considering that um, Arctic only has rocks as his pressure. Yeah. And has not to to kind of have to clean to making sure that rose does not get any spikes up and the cleft duosian both have magic guard meaning that he will have no problem in sitting in on this team yeah. especially with the um the infamous uh skirtingers duosian concept <laughs> of black white where it's set depending on the set it can kind of just win any matchup yeah so volby will definitely not be interested to see every how matchup <laughs> a well played the duosian has to be well played but Otherwise, yeah. I am curious about Quag's Volibee, though, because, uh... Oh, here we go. Um, so they're going to lead uh, Mistrevious versus Marshtomp, turn one. It looks like Marshtomp's going to try to get up rocks, but Mistrevious goes for the taunt, so that's a smart play. Uh, I would expect Arctic to, like, free Nasty Plot at this point. He but... might be three attacks, though, because taunt three attacks is kind of an Arctic staple across all gens. That's also, uh, that's also very true. See the hard and the e buzz Ooh, a as wisp. Wisp comes out. Okay, so it misses. Miss. Yeah, seems like it's definitely, like, probably Hex Wisp offensive team support then in this case. Probably to uh, let Duosian sweep at the end. Yeah. Um, it will be interesting to see what happens with the Sneasel, considering that that's going to be a very large key in this matchup. As yeah. It has a lot of very strong ways. Excellent pivot. Yeah. By Arctic to the Hippo there, too, denying any source of momentum. Yeah, the one thing you about Quag. Sorry? So you can't get rocks up though right now because the fear of that not to is still in play. Yeah, I will say though that like this E buzz doesn't necessarily have to be specs. It probably is, but in the event that it's actually Eviolite, um, I don't think it would stay in anyway. So I would no, expect. Doesn't. Yeah, I would fully expect Quags to go just not to here because not to kind of hard walls uh, Hippo. Especially I think kind of the best play here is the. Natsu, I do agree, but you could get double back into Missy, so he Quag does have to be careful about seeing this fatter team kind of play around. So he doesn't. Yeah, there it is. You called it. As yeah. Said, there's the double. Yeah. So now Arctic has uh, basically a free, again, a free hex. Or the thing is with this Missy though is if it's Wisp uh, taunt, why would I don't get why he would go for the Wisp on the Natsu unless he was expecting Sneasel to come in for some reason, but. Probably was expecting Sneasel for pursuit trapping. Banded Sneasel is by far one of the most intricate parts of this meta. Yeah. As it pretty much prohibits the ghosts and psychics from rampant. You can't have your S tier Kadabra, your S tier Misty without it. Yeah. Just because of how much yeah. Banded Pursuit can do. Yeah. I will say too, we'll I say think too, that I once, think. if. If uh, Sneasel dies, Missy and Duosian just clean Duosian up, so, just clean up so. so I don't think Quag would risk Quag the would risk potential burn that early in the game, but we'll see. we'll see. I think once something dies, he'll probably be able to get Sneasel in for free and he'll just get a kill, so. But yeah, it looks nice like uh, Clef is taking hits for days. It, yeah, it does not seem to mind the pressure at all. You do see the knockoff come in. The unbuffed knockoff is kind of a risk to run because it has to take up a move slot on a Pokemon, but on something as passive as Clef, it does not end running. Yeah, because I've very seen... fortunate for it. Yeah, just as a heads up, you just have an up. echo of me on your end. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. But you're right, with knockoff on Clef, I've seen uh, T Wave Seismic Toss, like knockoff soft boils on Clef, and it's, you know, you kind of have to do that in those pre fairy metas. Because as soon as Oras comes around, Clef is a nightmare as usual. So we see uh, Banded Sneasel versus Hippo here. Uh, Sneasel now is just going to put pressure on anything that comes in, save Monferno. I would, but he stays in. Arctic stays in with uh, Hippo on the Ice Punch. That's a clean yeah, play. Yeah, which is, uh, it's in my opinion, it's not a very good play because now you've sacrificed a lot of chip, and now Monferno can and get a lot of clean damage for you. Yeah. And now you have to delay. Your one offensive, your one actually good breaker mod being Monferno take a lot of chip, unless he's like 
Oh, this the isn't even Breaker. This is set. this is uh the bulky EV Light set then. It might be uh, Slack of Swords Dance, which has been used a couple times throughout tour. Yeah. It's been seeing a little bit more usage, but it's a kind of more of a niche set. Yeah. Rose comes in on the marsh, takes a lot of damage too. Yeah, I would. So Arctic is looking really chipped right now. Yeah, I was about to say Arctic's just taken so much chip these past three turns that it's going to be really difficult for them to really get a good grasp on the remainder of this game, especially when they, with the obvious Giga Drain coming out there onto the marsh stomp. Uh, the Monferno has a free switch in, and now it's. You know, it can slack off there. It could have U-turned on the Duosion into Sneasel there. Um, honestly, it probably will. Arctic apparently didn't expect that. Um, I would fully expect this Monferno to U-turn either into Volibi or Sneasel at this point. Yeah, Volibi has the advantage of being able to hard wall the common Duosion sets. As common, most Duosion sets do not run anything like Thunderbolt or something to hit it. It's yeah. usually running one or two attacks and a solo Psychic Stab or... Psychic plus hidden power fighting. Yeah, I've usually the my personal preference is to have something to actually touch Sneasel, but I've seen duosions that like are just acid armor, calm mind, uh, stored power, and recover or something along those lines. Um, and those can be just as scary. Yeah. Once those go up, they can hit the game. Yeah, you just but have by the to. Looks of it, all the dark types have to be gone. <laughs> so this isn't even a hex, just, Missy. Interesting. Uh, I think it's because Hex isn't very good in black white. I forget yeah. the exact mechanic of it, but the, it got a buff some. I think it just did just a higher multiplier in future gens, but Quags is, uh, you know, it's okay. I think that Quags' is buzz is a little weakened here. Uh, that is bad that that Monferno got uh, paralyzed, but... Yeah, that's a really unfortunate pair. Yeah, I do think that... You know, it's better Monferno than Sneasel in this case. Again, just because once Monf uh, Arctic's Monferno is dead, Sneasel just wins, basically. So, well played, Sneasel, but a Sneasel all the same. Banded Sneasel Ice Punch can't kind of rip through the team the way it's looking picked up right now. Uh, Arctic has revealed Acid Armor, though, so that will be interesting to see if Duosion can come in free without fear of Banded punishment. Sneasel as knockoff is not any good damage and so you usually run punishment for your dark stab right yeah because night slash you beat up on Sneasel for, for boosting up yeah night slash is only so good in this especially and i think that's one of the issues with pawn in black white 2 is that it really the dark stab it has dark is stab. fine but it doesn't really get much utility outside of night slash pursuit i agree um, Ponyard usually, in the case of Ponyard, you usually see it running dark to help attacks, but looking back at the match, another neat pivot yeah. in Quags is yeah. utilizing the Yeah, and now Sneasel's Yeah, and now Sneasel's in again with first two. Yeah, it's a dead, it's stuck. That's a dead Missy. Yeah. So, assuming yeah. that Arctic is not running any weird E spread, the Banded Pursuit, even without the switch, kills 40%. Mm-hmm. So you can actually lose your Missy really quick, as Arctic, as Quags chooses not to pursue, which is a weird play in my opinion. I don't like that play. Yeah, that was a very weird It's not going to work out for him either, as the Monferno is in relatively yeah. free. If Quags think... is switching, the Marsh Tomp is very chipped and possibly would fall victim to taking. Yeah, but Arctic's going to slack off here, yeah. And I think at this point, you can just click Thunderbolt again, except, you know, you die from Sand Chip. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot Sand Chip existed. <laughs> yeah, I did for a moment, because I, I looked away from the screen and was like, oh yeah, Sandstorm. I thought the e Buzz had more, but I forgot. Uh, yeah, so Volibee's in now, and I guess it threatens with, like, Brave Bird? I don't really... Quags had a really good spot going in, but now Quags is, like, kind of playing from behind, it's, it feels like. Yeah, missing the chance to pursue that... Mr. Drivius was absolutely huge because now he has to worry about it as he's gonna reveal that he is special. a special Volibi. Oh yeah, but that However, forces does... the Inferno switch. Clef just seems to hard wall it though. Yeah. The looks of it. Sub. Oh. He's dies to sand shit. Why, really Why is that not overcoat? Why is that not an overcoat Volibi? It was weak armor. I know. I, Why I is it not know. overcoat? Yeah, that there are some. Strange actions going on here. That was uh, that was some of the strangest I think five turns I've seen so far. I don't know. That was a that was a misplay. 
It is fine though, because if that Monferno is a boosting Monferno, it still does have the chance to come from behind, yeah. seeing as the Duosian seems to be solo acid armor the way he's playing it, Yeah. not giving it any sort of potential to go up against special attackers, not that there's much of them on Quag's team anyways, but the Duosian does seem to be solo acid armor with two attacks and recover. Yeah. I really disagree with sacking Vullaby too, like letting it take that much damage. I feel like Natu in this case is doing very little, especially now that rocks are on the field. And like, yeah, I guess you have a way to take some hits from Monferno or Roselia, but you lack that offensive pressure the way that apparently that Vullaby had. So, so. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, Vullaby is uh, genuinely not seen as a very good run in this meta. No buff knockoff. Um, very. I don't think it gets nasty plot this gen either. Nope. Has just kind of a kind of a shortage on tools it gets in future gens. Yeah. Which makes it less valuable as a presence in the meta game. Yeah. So Missy comes in here on the Ferno Flare Blitz, which you know probably a smart idea just to sack. Uh, you know, I would say Hippo coming in now is definitely going to put Quags into a tricky spot. I think he has to switch into either not to here. Because uh, this Marsh Dot is not going to be able Marsh to take an Earthquake. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Yeah, so the Slack Off was a little obvious there, but it's still a good idea for Ark to get his health back up. Mm -hmm. As the Nightshade coming out from Natsu does just go straight into the immunity of Clefairy. Yeah. Yeah, Clefairy this is gets knock off as well. This is going to be in some even trickier position now, because now Arctic has and Quags has to duel with having no defensive pressure coming out from Natsu, as it can just take mm -hmm. hits and kind of die at this point, yeah. even and, though the Missy is dead. And that Monferno switch is pretty clear on the potential Seismic Toss, or excuse me, Thunder Wave, but Seismic Toss is going to knock out this Ferno, and now Sneasel comes in, and, you know, what do you do? You Ice Shard? What? Huh? No. Huh? <laughs> All right, well, um, that's a misclick from Quag, so that looks like that's going to be... Act like that, yeah, I'm going to act like that wasn't... In... <laughs> anyway, it looks okay, like... Quags chooses... DPP for the next. Yep. So the forfeit, uh, Arctic takes game one. I really thought Quags could have taken that first game, but, you know, some interesting plays lead to some unfortunate, uh, you know, turns for Quags and Arctic, came, uh, Arctic takes game one. I feel that it's something we aren't going to discuss very much, just kind of a in view of that black white. I feel that. Quags, when prepping for Black White, did not immortalize the importance of Hazard Chip within his team, as yeah. he had a lot of Rock Sweet Pokemon. Even though he did stuck up on Duosian answers, which was good for Arctic prep, as he pretty much never doesn't bring that. Much. Yeah, the other he thing just kind of let himself take a lot of chip for no reason. Yeah, the other thing too I noticed about his team is that he has very few answers to actual like sand offense. If Arctic had brought probably, you know, Drillber and maybe like a Scraggy, he, uh, Ar excuse me, Quags would have been in rough waters, I feel like. Yeah, it was a it was a tougher, bulkier team. Yeah. So I guess now we wait for game two to happen. Uh, set. Yeah. You know, uh... What else can we say about this matchup, I think, that hasn't already been said? I think Clefairy, people are starting to really see in black-white that Clefairy is actually really good, despite the fact that, you know, it's not you know, a fairy it's type, and fairy it's not type, got it's all not the tools it'll have tools later, down the, have later down the line. Absolutely. I think something that really, really helped it was the leaving of Magmar before Classic. Yeah. As Magmar, back when it was and loud in the meta, it did centralize a lot of the meta around making sure that you could switch into it. And Clefairy, despite being a great spadef wall, just could not take two specs fire blast. It could not take focus blast off of it. Oh, DPP's up. Yep, all right, cool. Here we go. All right, so I feel, I really like DPP and we're gonna start over. So we got Golbat versus Piloswine leads. Piloswine leads tend to be focus ash, but a Golbat lead is really interesting, especially from Quag. I'm gonna switch sides just so that it's consistent. Um, and it leads War Turtle, go back into War Turtle, and we get the rocks up on uh, Quag into Missy then, and to make sure War Turtle can't spin. Uh, so Pilo Missy uh, from Arctic is pretty standard, but I feel it's really interesting that a Golbat lead from Quags comes up first. Um, I'm interested in seeing what uh, Arctic's going to do with this Missy though, as he nasty plots on War Turtle's Toxic. Uh, anyway, we're all caught up now, so. 
It'll definitely be an interesting matchup because now the Misty has a lot of advantage state as the crit does come out from war, which it will didn't matter. matter. I don't think it matters. No, it, it, it didn't matter if it's full spadef. Full spadef can take one yeah, of those. Yeah, if it's spadef, yeah. Yeah, if Quag answers this, I feel like he's uh yeah, good answer. Quag goes IDK if, if it didn't matter. Uh, yeah, looks don't like give away information. Don't give yeah, away. especially in DPP. Uh, just based on his response, I would imagine it's probably Fizdef Turtle, and I would imagine Arctic probably also has their own Turtle in the back that they haven't revealed yet, just because Pilo lead. Um, it's like 90% of the time there's going to be a War Turtle in there just to beat Roselia, or excuse me, not Roselia, Monferno leads as Metang comes out, and Missy can just click Shadow Ball on Metang, clicking rocks. I think Quag right now is just trying to stall out turns to get rid of this Missy, though I really don't like him sacking Metang this early. Right, and, right. As he does bring his own Missy with his boot tie. Yeah. So now the Murkrow is in. This Murkrow will definitely be pressing Pursuit here as Murkrow puts in so have, much work. Yeah, it's Missy can't go anywhere now. It has to deal with per, uh, the Murkrow in front of it. Yeah. And the risk about staying in to try and T-bolt it and get rid of it on the Pursuit is that it can click Sucker Punch, it uh, be special side and click Dark Pulse. It just has a lot of options here. So yeah. this will definitely be interesting to see where Quags goes from. I think Arctic Spice play is to just click Pursuit though, because again, you see like Shadow Ball's not gonna knock it out. He goes for a Brave Bird. Interesting play. That's gonna knock out that Murkrow immediately. I would I would have clicked Pursuit if I were Arctic just because you lose nothing and then if he stays in, you can then, you know, play mind games, click sucker, click pursuit. I really don't yeah. like that Brave Bird play. Uh, I feel like it was actually quite justified because he could have gone hard into Monferno. And yeah. if you pursue the Missy there, it may be taking out, but you don't want to free Monferno in this meta at all. Yeah. So the Brave Bird play is a little justified, especially when you pick up on the fact that the Murkrow was not 309 speed. It was actually slower than... I think Murkrow hits 306, was. actually. 309. It's 309. Oh, it is 309? My mistake. Gold that's 306. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, that takes a lot of damage from this player blitz. Wow, and it gets burned too. As well. Very, very unfortunate, but it still could be special side Golbat, so don't cross yeah. your fingers too yet. The but this goes is down. Yeah, Scarf Monferno versus what's probably Scarf so what's Monferno probably here, Scarf. As he goes, here as he goes. Arctic goes back into Pilot Swine. Pilot Swine. Ooh, special Monferno. Special, special Monferno. Special Monferno. So it's not Scarf. So it's not Scarf. Which means Arctic has a free CC if he wants it. Otherwise, War Turtle can come in, and I think War Turtle cleans up with uh, Surf slash Waterfall. Yeah, and that's going to be game two. Wow. Yeah. Quick crit game. Definitely, crit definitely didn't matter there in the process mm -hmm. of cleaning that game quicker. Yeah, especially looking at but, Quags' team now. Yeah, that Quake could have been big chip for him too, so you never know. Mm-hmm. All Do you right. Think he feels like speed auctioning, commentating it. Yeah, I mean, the thing about DPP is that, like, you just have to be able to control the momentum of the game, and when there's no Eevee Light in DPP, you can easily, like spend so much time just trading mons i mean like you can set up with murkrow or excuse me missy and then immediately lose it to murkrow and then murkrow just dies too um and the thing about that murkrow brave bird play going back yeah it probably was smart uh but the thing is since quags revealed no scarf inferno it's really hard to know actually whether or not um you know it was completely justified i think personally that brave bird again it might have been okay going forward just because you don't know if it's going to be Scarf Monferno or not, but you, DPP is such a guessing game sub time. But yeah. Anyway, that's game. So, wow, 2-0. Arctic's already up, so this might be a quicker set than we expect. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, if, if it's a quicker set than we expect, we're just going to put some extra recording on the end, so that way... Yeah. May... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you and I can just play a quick game of, like, the tier they don't play spectator just yeah. just so they don't get it you know just like, yeah it's like oh it. shit. like the game the the match ends after like a half hour but the video is an hour long it's i've seen technique. yeah there was actually like the the freaking tetris championships or something did that actually because the one of the guys won like three zero on the sets and it only took like 20 minutes but the video was like an hour and some long just to like just to like you know mess with the viewer yeah, I think it's more of a uh, keep you on your toes type thing because if you see like the end of the video, you know, oh okay, they're winning. Yeah, that's that's all it is. Oh, jeez. 
Yeah. There wasn't really much to talk about in that DPP set, other than the fact that I think Quags played a little poorly. Let a few mods die off far, far too early. Especially, well that, especially that Metang. Yeah, the Metang died way too quick. Not Ice Sharding into the gold that turn one, which while Rocks is a great play, get him up, you know, especially with you see the flying type right in front of you, I really think having that Ice Shard ship would have been a lot more valuable in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, especially on a Golbat lead. Like, you never see a Golbat lead. I think Scarf Golbat is actually a lead that's more frequent within some more offensive teams. Yeah. But looking at Quag's team, this is... Unless that Pylo was... Uh, I mean, we don't know if that was just like... You know, it looked like it was probably banded Pylo, so... It's possible. Anyway, we're going into SM for Game 3. And Quags has Haunter, uh, Servine, Marshtop, Zorua, uh, Staravia, and Kadabra versus Arctic bringing Meryl again. Um, the, the infamous Arctic Meryl. Fucking Arctic Meryl. Uh, Servine, Haunter, uh, Monferno, Volby, and Gabite. Um, you know, I think at this point, it's Belly Drum Meryl, and looking at Arctic's team, it's probably Spadef, uh, Servine. Probably spit up Servine on both teams. Zora is going to be fun to see. Yeah, this is definitely a weird matchup. I've never seen Zora in my life. <laughs> a worse Zora matchup, Jesus. There's no... There's nothing that Zora can do. Quags is saying, like, it can, this Zora can't lure anything, because, like, damn, you can't have it be, uh... You lure the Haunter with your Servine, actually. Yeah. That's, like, the one thing, maybe. But like, especially... That, that's definitely your best bet for a Zora look. Yeah. But like, Arctic's not gonna like threaten any like major psychic stab. Like on, so there's no like Zora can't have that Haunter, pretend to be Haunter and have the immunity, or anything like that. Oh, yeah, I said that backward. Yeah, you. Uh, the plan was you have it disguised as Servine, so when it switches it for the Leaf Storm, you hit it with Dark Pulse. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah, I said it backwards, my bad. Nah, it's all good. Um, Hunter on Quag's team will definitely be interesting here. I feel that it has a very, very strong matchup. Oh, 100%. Against Arctic's team. Yeah, just specs will absolutely come through and obliterate. Poison Z also seems very, very lethal. Yeah, I, yeah I, I think Quag's probably I think has, Quags probably has uh, Acid Downpour, just because I don't see any other, other yeah. Mons on his team really having Z. I mean, the way, to me, it looks like, that's probably, like, like Sash Kadabra. Um, I would imagine, it looks like it might be Scarf Staravia on Quags' team. It could be a defensive Staravia, It though. could defensive also Staravia be defensive. Yeah. The only... Z Zora. Yeah. <laughs> Black Hole Eclipse Zora. Take no, ch like, tank no hits. Just press the up smash button. Yeah. So, um, is Arctic's, is it Z Belly Drum Meryl, you think, or is it just like garbage Meryl? Because, like, whenever I. Garbage? Oh, I was just saying, like, just, like, banded, but. Oh. Uh, I think it's gonna be the Sap Slipper set, which, um, <laughs> brings in. <laughs> the, the set that uh, brings in Servine, traps it with Whirlpool. Whirlpool that, um, kind of staple of his teams. But we could also see Belly Drum come out here. Yeah, I think if Arctic brings uh, Sap Sipper Trapper Merrill, you know he sh he deserves to win at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is very much a power move because it is rather on grand scale. Of yeah, that it works. Yeah, Servine will definitely be interesting to see against Quag's team, as he seems to have very little way to switch into it. Um, Hunter can't actually be too guaranteed to switch into the Leaf Storm as the knockoff is an overlooming threat. Yep. And pretty much reveals what set you want to run. Um, the Monferno coming from out of Arctic's team too has a very strong matchup as well, even mm -hmm. with that Cad in the back. Once Cad has lost its Focus Sash, if it is Focus Sash, that will be a very, very rough way to kill the momentum. Yeah. And we're getting it started here as we see the Monferno Mafia. <sighs> Go Roses. <laughs> Monferno Mafia comes out. What do you mean, Pharaoh Seeds? Hold on. <laughs> Boy, I made you emotes. 
<laughs> Those are the only what reason happens? you want, because we made games. emotes for you. Back to the anyway, game. yeah, 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 yeah. So it looks like we have a bulky Staravia here um, against. We're coming in on that Mountferno as Mountferno hards into Volby here. This Volby has a free knock though, uh, which Absolutely, is yeah. There's no switch into this. There, there really is not. I mean, you could maybe go stay in and just do something, but like this Volby is actually going to put in so much work. Honestly, Quag only has like one or two mons that could actually knock off. Hmm. Interesting play by Arctic, though. I think he was going for the double into the Servine, because Servine yeah. would be the least affected by knock. That's true. It's go Chomper the Haunter. <laughs> I feel like, you know, as a rule of thumb, especially when playing SM, you really have to have at least two knockers on your team at all times, like when you're building. Otherwise, you just get overwhelmed, especially by Machoke. And that's the other thing. I'm surprised neither of them brought Machoke to the fight. Yeah, th there is absolutely no fighting type pressure, but I do feel that Machoke wasn't brought from Quags in because he felt like he would be bringing those bulkier teams, especially yeah. when you can see stuff like Meryl. Those fighting resists are prominent within his team as with both the um, probably Fizz Death Gabite as well as the Fairy type Meryl and the fighting type Immune Haunter. Yeah. As we see the March Tomp come out, yeah, it's very clear that Arctic did prep back. for, uh, for Machoke. Yeah, I think at this point, <laughs> he ah, so it looks like he thought that was the Zoro there, uh, but no, Marshtomp's able to get up rocks and Monferno toxics that as uh, Marshtomp goes for the yawn. So we're gonna see definitely Arctic either switching here or letting Monferno go to sleep, which is really strange to me. Um, yeah, that would definitely not be the play. Yeah, I would expect. I kind of want to take a moment to comment on kind of the, the game of 4D chess going beneath the layers of the game here. Because mm -hmm. you do have to be, just just the thought of that Zora being there is very terrifying. Yeah, as Marshtown brings out could... Yawn again. Excellent play from Quags. Yeah, I think that really prevents Servine from getting a lot of uh, momentum on that switch, as this might be the Zora right here. I think if this... Quags set this to be the Zora, no, it's... He doubles out. It was not the Zora. As the Acid nope. Downpour does come out, which and is going to be a it, lot of damage. Yeah, that's for what... That's... Against a Marsh Stop, that, that was good chip. But, like, you know, it's unfortunate that he wasted his Z-move there. I think there were, may have been better plays, especially... We don't know if this is a uh, sub Haunter or not, as it's Bomb, not Wave. Uh, I don't know what the need for Sludge Bomb is. It probably might be Hex in the back if that is the case. Yeah. Just because it's a 30% chance to poison as opposed to only a 10. Or maybe he just forgot Sludge Wave exists. Yeah, it's very possible. It's Arctic. Possible. That's messed up. That's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> so wrong. Nah, I'm, so, I'm still salty <laughs> from my matches against him. It's oh my fine. lord, I can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway. Uh, he's in a bad position here, though. That March yeah. Tom, despite being super chipped, has gotten off a lot of pressure to keep the switches up. Yeah, and um, he goes for another yawn. another yawn. Come out. So on the Sand Burvine coming out, so now Arctic can't really set up momentum with Leaf Storms. Very, very smart plays by Quag. He might just yawn again, to be honest. No, as he goes into Staravia. That, it does intimidate, so it does reveal that it is not the Zora. Yeah. As Marshtomp comes in, and now it gets probably, like, one more thing. I would imagine Quags is going to sack it here. Yep. Smart plan is in the sack. Make sure they can't really do much. This does seem to be a Fizz Death uh, Gabite. The fact that he is Dragon Claw, not Outrage. Yeah. Oh, something that uh, kind of just caught my eye when I pointed out no Outrage is that there is no fairy in Quags' team. Like, yeah. Like, Arctic at least has... Meryl. Real. Okay, but Haunter is out. Haunter is out on Quag's side, which is really, really scary now. Arctic has to make a judgment call as to what he wants to do with this team. He can't safely go into Volibee, as most would think, because that um, dazzling gleam off specs could be hiding in the back. It could be yeah. sub, it could be a lot of things. So now you have to make the decision of what set it's going to be. As where of uh, Arctic, it was more obvious it was Poison MZ. You can just kind of look at his team and say, oh yeah, yeah. that's going to be Poison yeah. Um, but this Quags. this Haunter could easily be Specs there, and I think a Specs Dazzling Gleam just puts a chunk into anything on his team, aside from maybe Haunter, but that's at, you know, 69, and it's going to be taking rock damage, too. He does reveal Wisp. 
Uh, so that's going to be a hex set as yep. it takes a nice percentage off of Damn. the Haunter's health on the Miss Wisp, but which in Shadow Ball does come out. He reveals no hex, which is really awkward in my And Life Orb. As well. Wow, that was a strange oh, Haunter. Gosh. So is this there Servine? Is. Nope, this is the real Servine. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Spideff. This is Spideff for sure, too. Yep. Spideff Servine, but it's toxic now. Interesting plays. I think at this point you kind of have to click knock. If, if the Servine oh, even has knock. The leaves, yeah, he did. Quags is uh, clearly tilted, though. I think Quags yeah, thinks it might be over. He still has it in the bag, though, as long mm -hmm. as he can pull it together. He does have the cat, and he does have the star in the bag. Yeah. Zora is going to be a weird mod to see as well. I mm -hmm. feel uh, that he could have brought something more standard in hindsight. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of unfortunate to watch because you know, it does seem like Quag, you know, unless you're Sap Sipper on Meryl, which I don't even know how to really explain it, but I think there were some strange choices by Quag, but Quag can still definitely pull it out if it comes down to it. Knocking off is definitely a good play there. Yeah, 100%. Because now the Volibee is chipped, so now we have to deal with the Leaf Storm damage. I feel like Arctic did that intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Arctic... I don't know if it's, like, necessarily toying with him, but, like... Inter okay, Arctic is just, like, giving this man what he wants, I guess, because there it is. Help the man out. Trying to help the man out. Extend the series, I guess. Yeah, uh, give people more stuff of, to watch. There's a lot of damage. Yeah. Well, that Monferno is going to go up. down. And now we... He's saying, no problem, I'm so... <laughs> the bants. But the thing is, with these rocks now up on Quag's side, Zoro is not going to be <sighs> able to bluff being uh, Kadabra if it is. Because it will take rocks damage. Yep, oh, and this Zora. is the Zoro there right here. There's the Zora. You can see it from the rocks damage that it did not. There it is, the and it goes for a Z. Yeah, Z power. Z. Z tectonic rage. Oh shit! <laughs> it ripped through it. It ripped through Bro. it. Bro. Oh no! Hold on, that killed. That crit. <laughs> what was that? That was some whack. I like it though. I like it. This is That's definitely wild. still in the game now. That knockoff is going to do a lot of damage. It's oh, it lived too. Zora living. Zora living. On oh my god. Last bit of health it can find. And it taunts it's on taunt. the synthesis. Oh, Quag's playing the 60 chess with the meltdown in the chat too. <laughs> <laughs> the meltdown in the chat. He's back. Quag's oh. in the game. Oh my god. What this the hell was, was that? Was it was the tech. He just no one was prepared for that tech. No one was no one was ready. So if you're Sucker Punch Haunter. <laughs> if you're Sucker Punch Haunter, I'm retiring from NFE. Yeah, I think I would retire like from all gens. <laughs> I've even played Gen. I retire 8. from mods, I'm gonna play VGC now. Yeah. Alright, so here comes probably yeah, Dazzling Gleam from Quags too. Wow. That's crazy. So Quags is That's probably going to clean orb. this up. That's life orb too. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, he is going to win. So we are going to get to see a game four. We get game four! The, the, the interdimensional six dimensions of chess. Oh my god. From from the Zora to the chat meltdown. Oh my god. That's crazy. Is that... Crazy. Six dimensional chess. Yeah, so unless... Yeah, that's it. That's GG. Wow. Okay, so... Quags played his heart out in the end of that, but I am gonna, I am gonna admit the game kind of was given to him, given to him by a crit and Arctic giving a little bit of lean, leeway with giving the defog and the uh, Leaf Storm buffs. One hundred percent. I think that was like that was I love wild. Quags, but there was there was absolutely some some giving in that. Christmas came early, baby. Yeah, really. And I think, too, like, I had no idea it was Tectonic Rage on Zora. I was expecting, like, you know, maybe some bullshit like Black Hole Eclipse or something, but I could not have expected the Tectonic Rage. Very good job for Quags, even though he did kind of, again, get that game handed to him a little bit with the defog off on Servine and letting, uh, Arctic letting him take out the Monferno there. So, we are going to see it go to Oros. Oros is guaranteed here because it is a play all four. Yep. What do you think, so if this goes to game to five, technology. what do you think is going to be this the goes, fifth here? Um, Arctic does get the pick, so I think we might see it go back to black and white. 
Yeah, I could easily see that. Let him actually win with Duosion as opposed to just, like, Quag misplaying. <laughs> yeah, the, the sheer threat of Duosion makes everyone choke. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oros I've... is guaranteed. Yeah. I think... With Oras is probably, I think Oras is probably my weakest tier, so uh, making those calls in Oras is always a pain because it's like, the the, the reason I don't like Oras as much is just because it has sort of like all the parts of uh, Black White that I don't find entertaining, and then it also is just like fat, the tier, for NFE. Yeah, um... There was a day where it wasn't like that, but ever since the Ponyard ban, I do agree it has shifted to a bulkier meta. Yeah. I actually really like Quilladin in Oras too, just because, you know, you do get, like, a better ground check on a couple different things compared to if you use, like, Rose. And Servine is, like, not there just because... Why isn't Servine there? It's... I'm waiting to go up. Yeah, same here. You go. Yeah. yeah, there was definitely not really much talk about that game that we hadn't discussed in the game itself. Yeah. Kind of the mix and match variety of the sets. I feel that Arctic actually could have played a lot better earlier on. Oh, 100%. Had he, had he not just sacked off a couple things. Yeah, and I think Arctic 2, again, being as generous as he is with this, this third one, I don't know if Arctic thinks that he has, like, the W in Oras going forward, but... We'll see. I know Arctic likes Oras, so hard to say. Hard to say indeed. Yeah. Yeah, and especially with Oras being... I think Oras is one of those few ones where it's not nearly as uh, matchup dependent as uh, SM or uh, DPP, for example. Um, w with DPP, it's a lot of, you know, predicting what your opponent has on their team. And, but with SM, there's just so many things you have to prepare for. With Oras, it's a lot more of the... Okay, these are the definite up, threats, like, and, you know, you just have to play really smart. Vault, it's up. Oh, they haven't dropped the link. Can you just put it in the, the main? Thanks. All right, cool. Gen 6. Let's go. Frogadier, Electabuzz, Monferno, Clef, Rose, and Vullaby versus Clef, Electabuzz, Munchlax, uh, Vullaby, Monferno, and Metang. Um, Quag is on far side, right? Yeah. All right, okay. I'm making sure my screen matches with it so we don't fumble. Yeah, I've had Arctic on my side the whole time. Or I guess, uh, yeah. yeah. So I think with this one, it's really interesting because Arctic's team looks really standard. And... Uh, so does Quags, though. Both yeah. of these teams do look really standard. These yeah. are definitely nothing out of the mill. I am going to point out that Arctic does have no direct fairy check other than the Rosalia. Yeah. Whereas Quags does have the advantage of the Matang. And, and Munchlax. has the bulkier Munchlax. Munchlax, meaning that it does have a little bit of setup potential, a very really quick landslide potential with those two setup mons, mm -hmm. Inferno and Munchlax. E-Buzz is definitely going to be lethal in all senses of the word. 100%. And I think, too, like, as soon as Metang is gone, Clefairy, assuming Arctic's Clefairy is uh, CM, uh, basically it can win. It just needs to get past Metang. If it has fire coverage, which I wouldn't expect it to at this point, I would expect probably... Uh, CM Moonblast knockoff and rocks at this point, just because otherwise, well, no, Arctic could have Monferno have rocks. Um, you know, CM T Wave knockoff Moonblast, or excuse me, not. Eh, we want Softboiled on there too. Uh, I can't think today apparently. Softboiled T Wave CM Moonblast is kind of what I'm expecting. From yeah, that's the both clefts. That's what I'm trying to say, but I can't really say it. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of oh, Arctic pulled the uh, the classic. Um, the the router got unplugged. Yep, Arctic's, uh, alright, so GG, uh, I could join game, I'm gonna do that real quick. <laughs> no, but for real. Uh, let's see, I think, it's as you said, like, Electabuzz on both teams is gonna put in so much work, just because neither really has a good electric resist, aside from Roselia on Arctic's side, and their own Electabuzz. Uh, Munchlax can definitely tank some hits from it, though, I think. Uh, Munchlax can absolutely take some hits from him, but he, ha he does have to be weary of the Specs Focus Blast that can put 100%. quite a number in Yeah. I think something that is not mentioned often in NFE, even though it's so uh, very, very critical once you play Mons with the bigger boys, is <laughs> that there is no leftovers passive recovery in this meta. Yeah. It's, like, DPP you know, is a little different because Evio doesn't exist, but... Yeah. As we see the Roselia Metang leads, 
Uh, Roselia has to switch. I would not be surprised if we see uh, Quags go for rocks on Arctic switch, probably into Vullaby, or yeah, probably into Vullaby. Uh, I think I might, we might see him go into Monferno as well. Either could be good checks, but I would be weary of the Zen Headbutt coming out. Zen so Headbutt or EQ even. The as they stay in and go for the Toxic on those plays. Wow. Absolutely amazing first turn from Arctic. Oh, nice. Capitalizing on the no poison type from Quags and as he does now switch out. The tank See, there's the turn the one rocks. play I was seeing. <laughs> yeah, the rocks. Turn yeah. one play on turn two happens sometimes, but an absolutely amazing lead from Arctic. You're gonna see the knock, getting that Evil extra, light out of there. Uh, just insurance of damage on the tank. He does let the vol get toxic, however, which is... Yeah, I will say, I think this Monferno on Quag's side is probably Scarf, because otherwise Quag's team is incredibly slow. So keep that in mind as the game goes on. That's my prediction of sorts. <laughs> We see the e buzz come in. I'm kind of predicting specs from this side, yep. the, from Arctic side e buzz. Specs Matang did get the probably. attack raise. Yeah, Matang get the attack raise, but I don't think it's going to be too valuable. Yeah. As he does not want to stand on this. As Clef goes comes in. The Clefairy on the Volt Switch. As he presses Volt Switch. He's definitely EVLite after that damage count. That is way, mm -hmm. way, way low numbers in the Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's Absolutely. the thing about Oras too, that I, I think a buzz in Oras is like the one place where Eviolite buzz is actually like usable, I feel like. And maybe that's just me uh, being a naive NFE player, but the thing about Eviolite Electabuzz is that it's just able to tank hits from other Electabuzz, and I think that's what's really crucial about running it. Uh, it's a little bit runnable in black and white, but I absolutely agree. Specs is a dominating set across E-Buzz sets, though. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if you went for Life Orb as well. Just that extra damage boost can mean so much in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. So at this point, I think I Arctic. Hmm, probably back into Roselia. He does go into Clef, which is a little bit of an odd play. I would expect a knock from both of them to trade knocks. Remove the Eevee lights as Arctic actually chooses to set up rocks, which is good pressure, but he does let his Clef get T-waved. As yeah. he chooses to knock that tank. Yep. In comes Monferno. Do you think Quags went for T-Wave again? Nope. Quags went for knockoff again. As we see Banded Inferno. That's new. Yeah. I say. I think though. I don't really agree with Arctic's play to go to Monferno there. Uh. I mean, I don't know what else you really. Man. Yeah. There was T-Wave. There was knockoff, and this Monferno, just based on the fact that it was banned, was going to put in a ton of work against. You know, against Volby, against Munchlax, against uh, Matang, even against this Clefairy. So, even though Clefairy does die <laughs> without the band, holy crap. Yeah, I suppose EV lights yeah, off, so. A, that's a lot of damage. Yeah. Um, I, I do agree. It was rather an unfortunately bad play to do that, as you are losing a lot of offensive pressure by losing your choice item. Rose would have been the more optimal play as it has natural cure to ignore that T-Wave and does not exactly mind losing its Evaluolite for its job defending against E-Buzz as yeah. it has the resistance to tank against it. Yeah, I, yeah, so I think we, I think at this point from Quag we see probably, uh, if, if that Monferno Scarf it can come in, but it's going to get poisoned. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and Quags is commenting, I can't believe you risked the Rose turn turn one, because Rose is, you know, going to put in a lot more work against that Clefairy or, you know, other things now, but, you know, I guess it is what it is. Yeah, this is going to be an absolutely crazy game going forward, because now you have to look at just the absolutely amount of massive work that Monferno puts in by simply existing. Yeah. The choice lock being off of it does actually, in hindsight, help it too, because now it can spam CC freely. You do see the go into E buzz as it gets poison and rocks chip, so it's going to be a crazy, crazy amount of chip. Yep. Does this Mon on. Monferno have mock punch though? That is the question. That is a good question. I, I think it's going to have mock punch in the back, but it's definitely not a smart idea to press it here, as it right. can still be Eevee like E buzz. And as he switches into Rose. Smart place by play. And the E buzz is going to volt switch probably into Metang here. Honestly, it's either that or. Again, I'm pretty sure this is Scarf Monferno. I could be very wrong, though. The other thing we could see is maybe Volby coming out and just clicking, just, you know, threatening knockoff again or a defog even. Because yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think if Volby comes in and defogs, that get rid, uh, gets rid of any like potential poisoning that 
Monferno might, uh, Quags' Monferno might have to deal with. Yeah, it's absolutely a smart idea to go into Voldy, as he does go, choose to go into Matang on the Rose, which is a smart play as well. Yep. Do get some extra little pressure against it as Voldy comes in, eats the Meteor Mash. Nope, doesn't Matang. eat the Meteor Mash. Oh, oh boy, the crit. Yeah, goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Oh, that's See you rough. See next semester. Do you think he went for... Oh, but the Meteor Mash misses. So, in Which the grand misses. scheme of things, not so bad. Not so bad, but it is going to be weird seeing the uh, very, very knocked up Volibee take a lot of damage. Yeah. Like my marriage. Oof. Sorry to hear that, man. Um, <laughs> you didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, hear what? My marriage is fine, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, as the Meteor Mash misses again. Misses. It didn't no, matter in the mean? grand scheme the of things, died. but... Yeah, Vol still dies, yeah, but you know... Potential plus one. The Vol died. Yeah. It could have been a plus one attack on Matang. I think at this point, Quags has to sack this Matang. Yeah. And now the play is probably going to Munchlax. Absolutely, because Munchlax can now set up curses and kind of get a lot of momentum against this team. Especially if this does turn out to be uh, Eviolite E-Buzz, meaning it does not have mm. much way to dramatically pressure against the Munchlax itself. If it turns out to be Expert Bell, however, we could see a lot of change in momentum and that extra little boost given by the Focus Blast going into the Munchlax. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, I guess, I guess you maybe wouldn't want to switch into Munchlax too, just because uh, Monferno is still alive and it's at 43, so it's not gonna be able to live a like a plus one curse Munchlax maybe for like whatever it wants to run. But Munchlax is gonna be taking a lot of damage from a CC. Munchlax usually chooses to run chip away in this meta as it allows yep. it to be other curse Munchlax. That's right. But the Munchlax does come out here, so I would imagine just like a curse immediately on Arctic Switch into Monferno as he reveals the Focus Blast, but the chip away coming out here, and again, it's a crit on the buzz. So now you have the question of, is this Munchlax going to rest? And I would imagine probably, because otherwise the poison damage is going to just take it out. Now I don't see what Arctic does in this situation, because this is a very, very hard situation for Arctic not necessarily risk going straight into his Monferno because it does mean that one E Buzz is in a terrible position for sure enough here it is with no here on, it on is, the rest as Munchlax does choose to rest Great so is this a sleep sides. talk Munchlax though that is the question because if you do that then you don't have any way to you're hard walled by like Miss Drevis and that's not really good for Oras to deal with as CC on Spun Sack that he does Oh, but the oh, static! Oh, no, static prod. Oh, no! <laughs> that, that's gonna be what it, what what we call a wrap, because oh. there's no way you can come back from that. That's very unfortunate. Yeah, because now, again, we Quags' is Monferno is still healthy, and here it comes in now. It could probably just click Flare Blitz or CC or whatever it wants to do, or hasn't been in yet. It hasn't, so we don't know if this is physical or special. I would imagine it's physical, so... Time to see. This thing does definitely get to press buttons as well, so yep. uh, he does choose and to he sack the Electabuzz. Ah, oh, the happens. Swords Dance! The Swords Dance is oh. the incredible play coming out from his end. Oh no! He brings it in the frog. That's a double KO! Oh <laughs> no! Side. This is uh, <laughs> this is turning out to be a very, very awkward game. Volibee still has a great matchup though. Yeah. His Clef is paired, the Rose is slightly chipped. Oh, but and... he brings in the Munchlax! Oh, I would have brought in Volibee there 100%. Oh, I absolutely would have gone Volibee, especially because it does bring that pressure from Monferno. Yeah, I, mean, I Munch thought... Munchlax coming out here is actually a little bit awkward, but it's just fine because Sleep Talk is not revealed. Oh. Yeah, oh, it looks like... Looks like... Look like it's probably Fire like Punch, like then. Probably gonna be Fire Punch, then. It's just fine. Yeah, so it's probably Curse, Rest... Uh, chip away, fire punch, which is a pretty honestly standard set for Munchlax, I feel like, especially in Oras. Um, but yeah, this Clef, the Clef can come in and assuming it doesn't get parried, it really, you know, you could probably beat the Munchlax with Monferno. I don't know why I said Clef. I was looking at it. Uh, now Monferno clicks CC, assuming it doesn't get parried on the Volibee switch. Let's see what happens. Yep, CC. Rips that's through. Not, nope, not, nope, not flight, gonna not do it. Flight. So he has to go into Rose, Rose now on the Brave Bird. As he goes for the knock. 
Ooh, interesting kind of play. Kind of a weird play considering that the EV light was on. Oh, the off. poison! Did you see the poison? Oh, it got poisoned! Oh! It got poisoned. There's so oh, much extra damage. That going chip. Here. That chip. Oh, that's going to be rough. Because now Arctic, honestly, you know, I would expect Arctic to just click and sludge bomb. But he goes for the synthesis here. Oh! Where are you? It's going to be. Where's, where's your the brave, brave bird? bird? Where's your brave bird? <laughs> just click where's brave bird. What are you doing? Oh! <laughs> Where's my little soldier at? Hold up. Oh, and now okay, Munchlax Munch starts Lax. cursing. Munchlax is cursing. All right, time Those to play Setup Wars. are being restricted from the screen, by the way. Yeah. We do As... not allow our children to swear. Oh. Oh. Okay, he's be unfortunate. Does he go for the rest? He goes for the T-Wave. And the curse from Munchlax coming out. Munchlax is just trying to get as high as it can because Munchlax doesn't fear anything aside from you know, a Ooh. crit from Rose now, but Ooh. let's see if Rose can yeah, knock this really out in three, but Monferno, oh. oh my god. It. It's up. Oh my oh. god, the Munchlax live. That's Arctic incredible. needs, Arctic needs a crit to win this, I he think, like at this point. Crits. He needs like three crits. Huge chip rest? against Lax too. All right, nope. No, no rest, no rest. So Quags is going to, is Quags going to pull this out now? Will it live a he sludge did. bomb? It did. Oh, but it got the poison! <laughs> oh, but he went for the rest. Oh, I was about to say. Oh, I was about to lose. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, on turn 40. So, I'm, I'm not that. doing any skipping turns, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't skip turns on your end. Yeah, don't skip turns because that's how it works. But Arctic loses, so now it's to game five. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Those turns went by really, really fast in the end, and I have my uh, play thing set to auto skip some turns. Gotcha. It's like, skip to current turn. So. All right. That's crazy. Game five. All because Arctic gave Quags it in Gen 7. Wow. Santa Claus comes in many forms, and seems that Christmas came early this year. In yeah. quarantine, of all things, too, we might see Quags <laughs> turn this around with the reverse sweep. Yeah. Do you think that. Can we can we like meme on Arctic if he like ends up losing game five here? Is is that acceptable at this point? I I wouldn't meme on. I I I <laughs> honestly I I might meme. I mean on that his, in the nicest sense, by the way. Yeah, I I think we might meme on his giving this, just you know, giving away that yeah. game. To his generosity. Generosity. Oh. Charity for that game. However, Quags please, is an sir, excellent player. May I he please have the W the with game. the Servine? Anyway, sorry, you were saying? Lord, um, yeah. Are you okay in waiting until Crystal's game is over? Oh, they're they're playing now? No, no, no. He said uh, he wants to wait until Crystal's game is Alright, well, we'll just watch that then.
Oh, they're in now. They're in there. They're in now. They're in now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's oh, go. they are. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> You're like watching that was torture. I hated that. All right, M another Oras <laughs> one. They went back to Oras. Quags brought the same team. Wait, why do you bring the same team? Quags Hold brought up. the Hold same up. team. <laughs> oh, jeez. But here now, whenever I see a Murkrow that isn't in Gen 7 or Gen 4, I'm like, this isn't z move, Brave Bird. For you. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, let's see. What is this team going to do? I think... I think Arctic maybe has a bit of an upper hand here just because of the team matchup. Hippo is going to be crucial in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Especially Golly. because Arctic knows everything, a lot about Quags' team, and Quags knows very little about Arctic's team. But Quags bringing the same team did reveal a lot of him about kind of how this game's going to go. Arctic having that Merc. He does lead with the Hippo. He's going to sand stream up. The Vullaby was a great lead. It yep. does. You can click knock just right there. <laughs> click knock. And there it is. Knock on that. As Clef comes out, Clef, Clef can using. now do something. Probably T wave. And yep. Probably yep. just, yeah, T wave as he goes into E boss. Quag's playing out of his mind his yeah. first few turns. Volt switch here from Electabuzz, you think? Or is Arctic going to harden to Hippo? Oh, interesting knock. All right. I think staying in a knock wasn't necessarily a bad play because he can't just yep. go into Hippo kind of risk free. He does have the Volibee if he wants to really be sure of himself, too. But yeah. Like... Murkrow comes in here, though, as the Toxic comes out on the Metang. So now this Murkrow is probably like Pursuit Trapped it. Absolutely. Yep. There it is. There. But Pursuit stayed in and went for rocks. Yeah, so now Metang again is dead. So. Murkrow when gets defog, the knockout. The rock's pressure is off his side. Yeah, I think at this point Murkrow just clicks defog. Or no, Murkrow probably doesn't have defog. Volibee probably has got the defog here. Yeah, Volibee definitely has defog here. Um, Hard hippo right here, I'm willing to bet on Arctic side. Might I mean, predict he this. probably does have Sucker Punch. He probably does have Sucker Punch. He probably does. does. Yeah. He did reveal last game that it was a 4 attacks E-Buzz with no sort of tech or anything whatsoever. So Sucker Punch is kind of a free play here. He does just harden the hippo though, saving the Murkrow for... On FB. So, wow! That did wow. a lot. That was a lot of damage. Yes. Yeah, as Focus Blast. Wow! Crit on the cleft, too. <laughs> wow. It did absolutely nothing. That. Like, if there's one point you don't want to get the crit, that was not the worst place to get the crit. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and then the knock. He's letting his munch get knocked. Damn. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be really, really crippling later down the road. Yeah, late game Arctic especially. Arctic kind of gets to go into Monferno free here as long as he does not reveal the tech and body slam. Whew, imagine. He goes, he goes for the chip away, Murkrow, chip away. Murkrow sack, makes sense. Mon Hippo Patas gonna come in here though. Does he think that... Uh, Hippo's probably gonna set rocks, which nope. is smart on his end. Slack off. Also gonna Slack off. use the whirlway to push away the X. Yeah. So the thing is, though, with Whirlwind's negative priority, if Quags predicts the Whirlwind, Quag could even just go for, like, a chip away here to get some chip off before... Uh-oh, my computer... Whew. Okay, we're good. Uh, to get some damage off before he gets Whirlwinded out. But I guess we'll see. He's just staying. Yeah. Uh, Quag seems to have absolutely no fear about the Hippo potentially breaking. He is going to try and force the rest as the rest goes up, so it's probably going to be a Whirlwind here. To yep. keep that absolute, there it is. Whirlwind to keep the. You're you're ahead of me. Just a heads up. I'm only on turn 18. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So we slack off. There comes the rest, and it looks like now looks like these now. turns are just going rapid fire as Whirlwind now sends out there, brings in Vullaby. Um, on turn 20, knock off from Vullaby onto the Hippopotas. Hippopotas' EB lights get knocked off as another whirlwind comes out on Vullaby. And in comes the Clefairy. Now this Clefairy it switches out into his own Clefairy. So now it's a Clefairy matchup on the Moonblast, which is crazy to me. Except not really. Uh, but Munchlax now is still asleep. It's going to come back out on this Clefairy's knockoff. Uh, you know, I guess a smart play because Munchlax doesn't have to worry about knockoff anymore. But Monferno comes in for free here as now. As now, uh, Quags doubles onto the Electabuzz on the Monferno switch. So now we're all caught up. And I don't have to talk as quickly. Um, 
<laughs> and it had those rap that, had that rapid fire speech. I like that. That was that was pretty. Years of practice. Could, this could also be a banned Monferno. Yeah, I think it is a banned Monferno to be honest. He does awkwardly go into Volby and predicts the psychic, which is a crazy play. Now the question is, is it Specs e Buzz? E -buzz. If this doesn't turn out to be Specs e Buzz, it is a free knockoff here. Who goes Vol? Arctic just went Vol. <laughs> I love that Arctic's response. I do. That's like the I best do. response to like who does that? It's like I do. The vows of dedicated dumbassery. See, I've done that before though. Like, uh, I was playing Aiden, I think, and he's like, "Who does that? Who ice beams there?" I was like, "I did." <laughs> so, anyway, a little bit about me. Uh, let's get back to the game though. I think at this point, you know, Arctic has a free knockoff or a free defog, whatever he wants to do. Uh, as he goes for knock on the munch to get that chip going, and he just clicks Brave Bird. If this Munchlax wakes up, that could be good for Quags, but Munchlax is still asleep. So now Arctic has a another free Brave Bird. Or if he wants to try to get aggressive, he could even just click knockoff on the switch into uh, e buzz here. Uh, I don't. E buzz, yeah. The um, pressing Brave Bird is definitely going to be a lot of damage here. Either mm -hmm. way, regardless of who he goes into, because you have, you have to realize that he has absolutely no flying type switching whatsoever. Yeah. Whereas he can go into the cleft for the knockoff and at least get a little bit of offensive momentum his way with the resist. Munchlax is absolutely in a terrible position here since the rest turns are leaving it asleep. He does end up going for the knockoff and putting the away that bird here right now. Yeah, still behind. Turn 28. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we just went to turn 29. It's good. Yep, yep, yep. We're there. For that, you can lose, even if you can. All right, so now nice. this E-Buzz is probably going to quick vol cleh, click Volt Switch, if I had to guess. Just because I would fully expect Arctic to go Hippo here. So I guess you could click Focus Blast if you want, but Brave Bird from Volby is going to be doing a ton to everything on Quags' team. So it might be better just to click the Volt Switch, get the mid-ground play. If you go into Hippo, you have a free, you have a free switch in, into your own Volibee, uh, and go from there. That's just the, the way I see it, be the stand on the He does go into the Clef hard. On the as Focus he Blast. Focus Blast. Great prediction coming out from Arctic, as he does kind of get a free Thunder Wave here yep. to pressure whatever he wants Why would you go Monferno there? Monferno? Why would you go Monferno uh, there? No. Why would you go Monferno there? No! no. That is not the play. Oh, no. that was... Oh. 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 All right. I'm going to change this stream, um, this video to a ceremony honoring the grave of this Monferno. Can Today I get... we come to realize... All right, gang, can I get an up. F in the comments, please? F in the comments. <laughs> Please give my man Oh, that's uh, awful. Quags just get, let his win con get basically paralyzed. Literally. Damn. Quite literally paralyzed. Going hard in the cleft on another focus blast. He needs a crit to rip through here as he's going to get the soft boiled for free. Yeah. The Monferno being parried is very, very unfortunate, too. I think Quag just loses now. Like, you know, before Quag, for this, I don't know, not necessarily to be dramatic, but, you know, Quag has been in not great positions before, but I honestly think. I don't think Quag can come back from this at this point. Yeah, there is uh, not very much hope in this position. You have to oh, defog away, and you have Small to... Rolling. I mean, the best you can do is just set up with Clefairy at this point. <laughs> Who even wants to play Oras? It's legit so bad. <laughs> Apparently Arctic, because he went to it twice. Yeah, Arctic went to it when we went to Game 5, so Arctic clearly likes his Oras. So how how does Quag win here? Does he have to basically set up with Clef with CMs and hope for the best? Because I think Monferno is not going to be doing much more than like clicking CCs and hoping for the best and hoping not get paired. Jeez. Sorry, I was. No, it's nah, all good. This game is kind of closing up to a head though. Yeah, especially after game four where it got really hype at the end. This is a, uh, you know, it's a slow drawn out thing. Unless Quag can somehow find a way to win with Clef, I don't think Quag can win. As another whirlwind comes out. Oh my god. This is going to be a tough play here too. Now he has to, uh... <laughs> Quag getting upset that uh, Arctic picks Oras. <laughs> there is definitely a tilt in chat. Oh, 100%. Uh, I feel like we should kind of focus more on chat tilt. Fortunate. 
for Art, I mean Quags. So yeah. kind of kind of keep his head in. The e still can't put in work. The paired Monferno is unfortunate, but the Clef is very scary as Monferno. Um, Monferno is really real check to it. Yeah. Unless he is uh, like Psy Shot. If that were a Psy Shot Clef in Oras, that would be a huge play. As he goes for the Thunderbolt. Oh, he stays in. Perhaps on the switch to Clef. Probably gonna see a Roost here coming. I don't know, we Maybe might see a defog. defog. Just on the predicted uh, Whirlwind here. Oh, as he goes Monferno. As he Roost, you are right. A good Roost, good Roost. Get that health up, because even if you get rid of the rocks, you do not want to have all that chip on you. It, he reveals to be bulk up. up Monferno. Oof. I don't he know if that's... Forfeits. He's and that's going to be it. Oh, well, I guess that's it. All right, that was anticlimactic. Congrats, oh, Arctic, for winning the NFE Classic. Wow. Right. What a what a good set. It was, was a pretty good series. Had a lot of ups and downs. A lot of Had hype a lot moments. Of plays, a lot of unique sets, but I believe overall that it was a pretty great set. Yeah. All right, so... I'm going to have to bounce. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for letting me record with you, man. Yeah, thanks for uh, co-commentating with me. It's always good to have a lot of people who know what they're talking about when it comes to NFE, and it was a pleasure having you. All right, man. See you, see you. Yeah, catch you around. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, etc., etc., and stick around for uh, more competitive Pokemon stuff in the future. Uh, I've been Voltage, and uh, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful day.